Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Epcot and we are going to be dining at Chefs de France here at the France Pavilion at Epcot's World Showcase. I am so excited. It's been a long time since I've been at this restaurant and they changed the menu a lot so I decided to come back out. We're going to try some fancy foods like escargot, maybe some ratatouille, ride some rides and have a beautiful Epcot kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. The last time I dined at this restaurant, they had a very limited menu, and I don't even think Remy's Ratatouille Adventure opened yet. I would love to actually be able to ride that today, so we're gonna see if we can do that and a little dinner. I'm actually wearing a Ratatouille Roosevelt shirt, so it'd be really cool if we can do like the trifecta, you know what I mean? Go ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure while wearing a Ratatouille shirt, and then go to Chefs de France and actually eat Ratatouille because it's on the menu. And the one thing I like about this restaurant is they have a prefix menu, which is such a great deal. I think it's $67. You get a glass of wine, you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, or you can just order like a la carte per entree. And like I said, a lot of the stuff wasn't on the menu the last time I came so I'm excited I'm excited to see what they have as I was making my way into Epcot I ran into chef Daisy how are you today very good you look fabulous yeah she, oh, I know you look fantastic too thank you yep I'm, I'm ready I'm actually gonna go get some ratatouille I'm gonna go eat some ratatouille yeah oh hey yeah very fancy. I'm sure they might have something good over there. A nice little apple pie. Well, thank you. It's nice seeing you. Can we do a photo? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that was so cool. We just ran into Daisy and Mary Poppins is walking around. She's in front of us. Look at her. Just, just walking around World Showcase. Mary Poppins in the wild. That was really cool running into Daisy like that. And she said she liked my shirt. And also, I want to mention if you guys like the shirt, you can also buy it. There's a link in my description with the promo code. They have a lot of different Ratatouille shirts. This is just one. They actually have three of them and I can't wait to wear them because they're all really amazing. And now we have made it over to the France Pavilion. And I have to say, I feel like the France Pavilion is the biggest pavilion at World Showcase. And I think it has the most offerings too. I mean, there is so much going on in here, especially with the expansion of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Honestly, the more I think about it, there's not a World Showcase Pavilion that even comes close to the amount of things France Pavilion has. They have three sit-down restaurants, they have three quick service restaurants, they have two outdoor carts that are here all year round, including the food and wine or the festival booth. They have an attraction, they have a show, they have so much, like honestly, there's, that, there, I, there's nothing like in comparison. We have a little time before our reservation, so we'll probably explore around the pavilion a little bit, but I wanted to show you guys the menu. They have some menus outside that you can take a look at, and like I said before, it wasn't as big last time I was here. I mean, they added so many different entrees and even appetizers. There's so much going on, and I'm excited, and I was talking about the prefix traditional. $67.95 for one appetizer, one entree, one dessert, and one glass of Chardonnay, and that is such a great deal like seriously think about that because if you add them up individually it'd be close to a hundred dollars like <laughs> that's such an amazing thing to actually get Whenever I make videos about food or restaurants, a lot of people always ask how I end up always liking everything. And, uh, you know, a simple answer is I really do just order things that I like. You know what I mean? I don't like to go out and order things that I don't like. And I don't like to focus on things that I don't think are going to be good. So today, I feel like I am going to be trying some new things and things I've never had before. And recently, I've been really, like, expanding my palate with things. I'm not that big of, I, I'm a very picky eater. But trying new things is so much like more enjoyable it's very fun and i get to make a video to show you guys at the same time i think we're gonna start off by heading back and checking out the wait time for remy's ratatouille adventure i wasn't able to get a lightning lane for it today and i know that it's a very popular standby line so it actually might be very busy out and they actually have a wait time sign right here so you don't have to walk all the way back oh it says 55 minutes but it might not be 55 minutes we'll go check it out we don't have 55 minutes our reservation is in a little bit I don't even think they're doing virtual queues for this ride anymore. I think the only place that actually has a virtual queue still to this day is Guardians of the Galaxy. And I feel like that's going to be gone soon. So it's either standby or be able to get a lightning lane. And uh, no lightning lane for me. So we'll see. We'll judge it. 
before I was talking about how big the France Pavilion is and it has so many offerings but I think they could do one more thing I think they could offer a meet and greet with Emile and Remy how awesome would that be I mean I know they come off for special events and stuff but they should have a designated like area that you can actually go meet those characters I mean it has such a heavy influence in the park and look at this here we are we made it back Ratatouille's adventure you know, I think we're just gonna go for it. I'd rather ride now than after we eat. I mean, there's still things that we can do in the pavilion after we get done with dinner, so we might as well just hop in line now. One of the things I have to say about the queue or the standby line for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, it definitely plays tricks on you because you go indoors and then immediately outdoors. So you think you're actually gonna be waiting in some nice AC, but most of it's all outdoors here. So <laughs> it plays tricks on you. Something else that's really cool is this is an exact duplicate to the ride over in Disneyland Paris. So they do have a single rider line set up here. Like they actually have it because the one in Disneyland Paris is a single rider line, but they're not using it yet. And I don't even know if they intend on using it, but they have it in place. It's ready to go. So why not open it up? Let the single riders free. Right on the outside of the queue, uh, someone or a friend of mine showed me uh, some really cool Remy Easter eggs. You can actually see his little uh, footprints, his little paws, his little paws, and it's coming from the crepery and then it goes backstage. Look at that. That's such a cool little Remy touch. I love that. Thank you so much. We got to grab our glasses. And I also like these glasses. They're very sturdy. Metal, not plastic. I think they're metal. Also, I feel like these glasses fit over my other glasses, so that's why I like them a little bit more, too. They actually fit there perfectly. Look at that. I can wear these out in the park. Little shade. Hi! <laughs> oh, here comes our little trusty motor transportation. Oh, not him. Not that one. Maybe this one. That's our dino. <laughs> Right up here you can see the Pizza Planet truck. I'll show you in the window over here. I feel like that last room matches my shirt really well. One of the coolest things I always like to point out whenever I ride this ride is when you start the ride, you shrink down to a little rat. So the tiles, when you get off the ride, are big and you have to return your glasses. And once you return your glasses, kind of like how you're an honorary rat or an honorary bug, you become human again and the tiles shrink down. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? It's such a nice, like, awesome touch that they put in here. 
Well, that was a lot of fun. I'm so happy that we got to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure before we eat some ratatouille. And the wait wasn't that bad. It was actually really quick. And I'm just kind of happy. It looks like there's a storm of brewing too. So I'm glad that we did it beforehand because if we waited afterwards, we probably would have to wait in the rain, I would assume. Or I actually, there was a little coverage there, so it wouldn't be so bad, but it'd still be muggy out. Now let's make our way over to Chefs de France. And also I want to point out before we were showing you a little uh, footprints of uh, Remy, but also look at the little Remy on the bench here. Look at how fancy that is. It's like hidden little Remy's instead of Mickey's. Another really cool thing I wanted to show you guys before we head into the restaurant is they have a show here that's actually two different shows. A lot of people think it's only one, but it actually switches uh, every single day. And it starts off with Beauty and the Beast sing-along, and then it switches over to uh, Impressions de France. And that is, I think, at 6.30? Yeah, I think it's about 6.30 that they switch it over, but it's every single day that they do that. Right back here is what I was talking about and right now they're doing Beauty and the Beast but they do do the other show and I highly suggest watching both of them because Beauty and the Beast sing-along really tells a tale as old as time, a twist on a tale as old as time. It actually has some like behind the scenes work of the movie itself and I kind of like that. Like not behind the scenes but like a secret storyline behind the scenes and then of course this one is a classic so definitely check them out but this one doesn't come out until 6.30. Earlier I was talking about how the France Pavilion has three sit-down restaurants. They have Chef de France, which we're about to go to. They have the, the creperie, and then they also have Monsieur Paul. But this isn't open yet, and this is on my list of restaurants I have not eaten yet at Walt Disney World. In fact, it's a very small list. There's only, I think, three restaurants on that list remaining. So three more restaurants, and I can officially say I have eaten at every single restaurant at Walt Disney World. And uh, this is one of them and Victoria and Albert's is the other one and I think I haven't got to Jico yet So those three are the only three and then I can kind of take that title Right back here is that restaurant. It's actually on the second floor. It's on the back side of Chef de France and it's on, on it has like a similar menu too, but I'm still just so intrigued. They have a prefix menu, but I do see some like different things on here that I'm kind of interested in trying like roasted duck and then bacon wrap golden tile fish. Oh wow, there's actually a lot of good things I would like to try here. The seared New York strip steak. This definitely seems like a step up, honestly. Seriously though, one day we're gonna be able to say that we've eaten at every single Walt Disney World restaurant. Very soon, like as soon as that opens up. Uh, the other two restaurants are already open. I just haven't been able to get a reservation yet. All right, now it's time to head on in. We're all checked in. We're gonna be able to sit down here. Oh, I can feel the AC too already. Definitely a powerful AC. Here is a look at the restaurant. I'll give you guys just a quick little tour. It's actually broken up between two different dining rooms. They have like the main one right here. And then on this side over here, they have like a little sunroom. I always end up sitting in the sunroom though. It's like very nice in here. Yeah, pretty good lighting, but I feel like there might be an echo. So if you guys hear a little echo, it's probably because we're in this room, but it is nice. Now we are at our table and I kind of already have an idea of what I want to get. I know I'm definitely getting the prefix, but I also wanted to tell you guys that if you wanted to get this and you didn't want to get a glass of wine, you could get any non-alcoholic beverage along with it too. So that's always good to like point out. And I told you before, I just love the inside here. It's so beautiful. We're actually in the solarium room here. Of course, a fancy establishment like this, I have to take the hat off, even though I'm bald, but it actually feels good. The AC in here is working pretty strong. In fact, I'm right next to an AC vent. And I like sitting over here too, because you can just feel the AC pump in there, and you can watch kind of people just walking around the pavilion. People watch while you eat some fancy food. Look at that. I decided on going with the Chardonnay, the escargot, the ratatouille, and then they have like a nice little lemon cake, I think it is. It's a citrus cake, actually. Uh, they do have a creme brulee, but I, I feel like I might like the citrus cake a little bit better. Strawberry lime cream with warm berry compo. I feel like that's the way to go. I do want to point out that the prefix menu is good for any entree. So whether you decide on getting the ratatouille, which is $25.99, or you plan on getting the filet, which is $40.95, depending on what you're in the mood for. But I mean, if you want to go for the best bang for your buck, I would assume going with the filet would be your best bet. But I kind of in the ratatouille mood. 
here is my Chardonnay. Very fancy. Now, I'm not a big wine drinker, but since it came with it, I might as well indulge a little bit. I would much rather get like a, uh, a beer if possible. They do have the 1664 here though. So we might get that after we have this. And we definitely came in at the right time. There's definitely a storm of brew and I can see it's very windy out there. So cheers. Yeah. Thank you, is that the baguette? Yes sir, you Ooh. Enjoy. <laughs> On top of all the food that you get, you actually get a bread service, a nice little warm baguette. And on, honestly, if you guys watch my videos, the last one I was talking about Beauty and the Beast and how I always thought in the, the movie they said, Maurice, hurry up, the baguettes. But it, it, they don't say Maurice, they say Marie. Marie, hurry up, the baguettes. I had to Google it and it blew my mind. But look at this bread, look at this. Oh wow, much too good. You know, we definitely have to break the bread here, though. Ooh, it's actually so warm. Mm. Mm. The bread is actually amazing. I love this. It is so good, and it's got some butter with it, but the escargot has shown up. And let me tell you, I'm a little nervous. I've only had escargot once before, and it was actually at the festival booth, and it was, I think, the croissant escargot, and honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan, but I'm willing to try something again and try something a little bit better prepared. So I'm kind of intrigued. This is how they present it. Ooh, that's hot. Burnt my fingers. <laughs> but it, it's funny how it's like that. And they said you can basically kind of like scoop it out and then bite it with the crouton or you can take the crouton off and then add the escargot on top. So I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Maybe I'll try it both ways, but okay. This is, I, I, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Fair warning, I think it's gonna be like a 20% uh, chance or, no, 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 it's gotta be higher. It's gonna be an 80% chance that I'm probably not gonna like this, but I'm intrigued and I'm excited for the experience. I think I'm gonna try scooping it out. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna take this and just scoop it right out and flip it over like this. There we go. That's the way. <laughs> All right, I got my wine right there. I'm ready to go, just in case I don't like it. But we're just gonna, we're gonna go in. Here we go. My first actual like full escargot. Like I don't think you can count the croissant. I don't think you can count it. But here we go. Here we go. It's not that bad. You know what? It's not bad. It's not something that I probably would want to eat. Um, I don't think I like it, like just because I don't like it, but I'm sure it's cooked and prepared, you know, perfect. I do like the croutons and like the garlic butter, parmesan. And then of course, once you get to the snail, that's when you got like that earthy taste to it. And it's definitely a required taste, but I'm so excited that I tried it. Like this is, you know, an experience that I can, kind of knock off my bucket list. At least I could say, yeah, I've had it. I don't know if I would ever voluntarily just want to eat it again. And to add an extra like plus to this experience, I think that is better than what I tried at the food and wine stand, like the croissant escargot. This has a lot more other flavors included in it. Like I said, I like the garlic and the croutons and everything like that. It's just the texture of it I don't think I'm a big fan of. Let me know in the comments though, what do you guys think about escargot? Like, is it something you enjoy eating? Is it like something that you like? Oh, did you guys see that lightning? It's really coming down out there. It's, I feel like, like I said, I feel like it's just the, it's, it's the, the texture of it. Seriously, I am so happy we're actually inside here right now. It is like a river. Look at this river coming through here. You can actually see it going down. Like, Wow, it might flood over here. I have a feeling it might flood actually over here. Now that the escargot business is out of the way, I basically slammed down my Chardonnay. So I think I'm gonna switch it up to a BNB &B coffee. And that's something my uh, waiter actually suggested. It's like a coffee liqueur and coffee espresso. It's a nice French drink, he said. So I'm very excited, I'm gonna try it. Wow, and holy moly, I was not expecting this. That looks absolutely amazing. Definitely a coffee lover's dream. 
I can't wait to see like the whipped cream actually combine with the coffee there. Wow, and it has some cognac in there. This is really, really, I, I am so excited to try this. I am so excited to try this. Now it is a hot coffee too. It's a hot coffee in a glass, so watch your hands. That's got a kick. It's amazing though. Ooh. Oh, ah, ice straws caught my eye. Ah, I went in for whipped cream and I poked myself in the eye. That right there is absolutely amazing. I love it. And I don't even know if it's on the menu or if they just told me that and they made it for me, but I love it. I would highly suggest that. And as I was enjoying my coffee, look at what came out. It's the ratatouille and it looks so good. Actually, I'm very, very excited for this. Look at this, the zucchini, the tomatoes. I can't wait to dive into it. And also, I saved my baguette just so I can soak up all the sauce with my bread. Oh, this is gonna be so good. If you guys have ever seen Remy's, or if you ever seen Ratatouille, uh, you know that when the food critic, Anton Ego, actually takes a bite of Remy's Ratatouille for the first time, he like flashbacks to his childhood. And it always reminds me like how I do my black and white like slow-mo when I take a bite. And uh, I feel like we're in the mood for that today. So I'm gonna grab my first bite here. I'm gonna grab a little bit from the side here. And we're gonna go, bon appetit. This is such a great dish. So much flavor in it. I love zucchini. Zucchini is one of my all time favorite veggies. It is just amazing. And when you combine everything all together, it's such a great bite. Such an amazing experience. So delicious. And like I said before, you save your baguette to actually soak up all of that sauce. It's much too good. Wow. Not too sure if they are still selling the ratatouille crepes over at the creperie, but if you want like a really good ratatouille experience, I'd come here and try this. The first time I ever had ratatouille though was at Citrico's actually, and that was one of my biggest, like my first time dining experience or Disney dining experience. So the first time I ever went to a fancy Disney restaurant, I had ratatouille. So I love this, it is such a great dish and I'm so happy that it's on the menu again. Last time when I came here, like I said, they didn't have it. It wasn't an option. It was only like three entrees, but now I feel like it's complete. I feel like I did my shirt proud today. And actually one of the Ratatouille Roosevelt's is actually the recipe for uh, Ratatouille on it. So that is really, really awesome. And like I said, you add a little bread, get that sauce, soak it all up on there, and it's a perfect bite. And to think we still have dessert to get to. We're definitely gonna join the clean plate club though. That ratatouille didn't stand a chance. I literally ate all of it, it was so good. Now it's time for the citrus cake and I've never had this dessert so this is gonna be something new but I think I'm gonna like it. I mean I had the creme brulee here before and it was very good but kinda wanted to try new things today. And here is the citrus cake. This looks really pretty. The presentation is very nice. The only thing is it's, it's kind of tiny. Like it's very, very tiny. And they don't give you a lot of compo either. But I'm excited to dive into it. You know, sometimes the little things have like the best flavor to them. But you know what I mean? But I mean, it looks good. I don't even know what these are. Little tiny swirls. They look like mini space mountains actually. <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Also, I'm not too sure what the individual dots are. I know this is the compo over here. So I'm just gonna go like this. Yep, I'm gonna go just like this. Oh, I'm knocking it over. There we go. And then we're gonna go like this, and then like that. Perfect. A little bit of everything on one bite. Oh, can you hear that thunder too? It's very good. Oh, wow. The compo has a very strong flavor to it. Very berry, very berry. Honestly, I really do love this. I think I like it a lot better than the uh, creme brulee I had last time. Very strong flavor and I love that. Very fruity, very lemony, <clears throat> and very berry. 
It's definitely the perfect dessert for me. <laughs> I still haven't tried one of these, but I think it's like one of those crunchy things. I don't know what they're called, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm just gonna eat one on its own. I seriously don't know what they're called, but there are a lot of desserts, and I don't know, they don't have any flavor. It's like eating styrofoam, honestly. I think that's what it is, but we'll find out. Yep, <clears throat> that's what it is. Ate everything except for those. I left those. I really don't know what the point of those are. They don't taste good at all. They taste like stale Lucky Charm marshmallows. Well, that was a lot of fun. I really do enjoy coming to Chefs de France. And it's so funny because I'm really not like, I mean, I, I, I do like a lot of food, but I'm not like a big foodie foodie. You know what I mean? I'm kind of just like a Pennsylvania guy who likes meat and potatoes coming to Disney World and finding the, all these amazing places to eat and just experiencing them and sharing them with you. I'm not really like the critique type of person. I don't know how to describe my food or anything like that. Most of the time I take a bite and I just say, oh, that's good. You know what I mean? But it's really awesome to be able to experience these things and try new offerings and at the same time make a video and show you guys. So it's kind of like, you know, such a mutual thing, such a fun, fun experience. It is still raining actually pretty bad out. Everyone's got their ponchos on. I have my hat luckily, but I don't know what I could do else. I mean, I can kind of like bob and weave out of the stores a little bit. Go in here, maybe get a spritz of some fancy cologne. Get a little spritz of fancy cologne, you know? This is my go-to cologne right here. I always like to wear it and you can buy it here. You can buy it anywhere, but you get custom engraved bottles here, which is kind of cool. I've never got a custom engraved bottle. That'd be pretty fancy, but uh, they do have little samplers. So you can give yourself a little spritz to make you feel good, make you smell good. I think we'll try this one right here. Get a little spritz on there. Wave it around a little bit. Hmm. Can you? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very fancy. The little tester strips actually have the retro Epcot logo on it. That's very nifty. I wonder how many they ordered and how long it's going to last like that for. Because I bet you there's probably so many of them. But I'm going to keep one. I'm going to put it in my put it in my pocket. A little keepsake. <laughs> Remember earlier I was showing you guys, I bet you it was going to flood. Look at this. It really did flood here. It flooded over in the France Pavilion. I'd say it's like maybe uh, about maybe five, six inches of water. It's pretty, pretty deep. Can't really do anything else because it's raining right now. It's still raining. I mean, it's not a downpour, but it was a downpour, as you could see by the flooding there. Now, I think maybe we'll just hang on a little bit more here. Maybe go check out some of the merchandise, some of the Ratatouille or Remy's merchandise. They have so much Remy like merchandise here. I've seen somebody before with this Remy little like stuffed animal and it's so adorable. And look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. But then I have to question Emil's eyes. Why does Emil's eyes look like that? And then Remy's eyes look like this. Did Emil get like poisoned or something? Look at this. That's not the same. I don't know what's happening there. I feel bad because I do love Emil. And then they have tons of other stuff too. They even have like the ride vehicles that like scoot around the floor. I'm sure you just pull those back. Lots of other, ra like they go all in. Like they go all in. Well, look, this is actually a nice little collectible too. Look at that. Rat a two e. They also have a Remy's Anyone Can Cook uh, cookbook. Look at that. Very fancy. But wait a second. There's no recipes in here. I think it's. I think it's just blank. I guess you have to draw your own. <laughs> it's not a cookbook. It's just a notebook. But I kind of like. I was. Just, I was looking for like a secret ratatouille recipe. But I think you have to fill it in yourself. That's kind of that's kind of sad actually. <laughs> they also have some wooden spoons. Look at this, a lot of good things. Oh, this was really cool. Can you imagine actually taking this around with you as you did a meal's uh, fromage montage? I mean, that would be fun for the food and wine festival. A little soup spoon, bon appetit. You know, when I was a kid, my grandma she used to say, "I'll get the wooden spoon if we did something bad," and she would. Seriously, I loved my grandma to death, but anytime we were ever being like, you know, a little rambunctious, especially as kids, 
should always go get the wooden spoon. She had a gigantic wooden spoon. Like this big wooden spoon. I don't even know what people would use this wooden spoon for. Let me know if you guys know what I'm talking about or if you ever, you know, been threatened with a wooden spoon or gotten hit in the butt with a wooden spoon. I mean, I did. I don't know if that's normal now, but my grandma, she was awesome. And uh, I knew she, I mean, she she was like winding up, straying up. And she would like get down and she would wrestle us. And like, I mean, she would take care of me and my cousins and my brother. So it was all boys. And let me tell you something. We loved and respected our grandmother. Like she knew how to do it. And I miss her so much. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I picked up a wooden spoon and now I'm getting emotional. All right, we need to move along. <laughs> All right, I guess it's time we start making our way out. And it actually starts to look like the rain is stopping and the sun's coming out. Figures, but I mean, hey, I was lucky enough to be in a restaurant during the majority of this storm. And also, I wish that they would open up this walkway here. How cool would it be to walk down here? And they actually have it on the other side of this bridge too. If you look over here, you can see a little walkway and it kind of continues. I mean, at one point, I feel like they might have like had that for something why would they do that just for decoration i mean it is disney they do you know go really uh far to actually keep things themed so maybe it would probably be a good thing to stick around if you wanted to ride some rides normally the park clears out whenever there's a lot of rain and lightning and thunder like there is in fact maybe we should check the wait times just to see what it's like before we go Looks like the Disney Skyliner is currently not operating because of the lightning. And here's all the wait times over here. Grand Fiesta Tours, 15 minutes. I don't see anything else yet. Oh, there we go. Mission Space, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Frozen Ever After is an 80 minute wait. Holy moly. I might be, oh, that's because Test Track is closed. That's right. If Test Track goes down, then all the other rides have to absorb that. You know what I mean? So they have to take over the, the, the bolt of it. Uh, Figment's 15 minutes, Soren's 15 minutes. I guess that's not bad. Seas is 10 minutes. So the only thing with a long wait probably is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and Frozen at 50 and 80 minutes. And I guess with that, we are done here today. A lot of fun just coming out, going to Epcot, doing a little Chef Stefan's uh, escargot. Uh, it's a big no for me. I mean, it's like I said, I'm sure it was prepared exceptionally, but it's just something I probably don't like. Uh, but the ratatouille was amazing. I really love that. The cake was good. Everything was good. I really do like Chef de France. And I feel like that prefix menu was such a good deal. You know what I mean? $67, you get all that included with it. I plan on doing some more Epcot uh, restaurants again. Now, if you guys recall, not too long ago, I decided to go around and eat around Epcot's World Showcase. But I did that. Uh, during the staged reopening so most of the restaurants weren't fully like up to par I feel like I should start it again where I get to try more of the authentic like side of it that before they were cutting corners and basically just trying to get everything together to open up so it'd be nice to actually go through and get a good experience so you might be looking at a new series here nice new series of Epcot's World Showcase restaurants so I hope you guys enjoyed the video I enjoyed making it we'll see you next time Bye.